Can you share with us a little bit about the internal journey of the courage that it requires for you to actually come out of the closet and actually share this plan? Yeah, right now, especially very recently, I've been really talking about listening to my calling and following it. And when I think back and when you ask this question, it really did make me think, oh, wow, this actually, I'm not just starting to listen to my calling now. I was listening back then because there, my tech career was like taking off. I was the number one sales rep at every company that I worked at. And for those that don't know, if you're the number one sales rep at an early stage startup, you have more power than the CEO. In most cases, I was bringing in at least 50% of the revenue in the company. So when the CEO was like, did you get high at lunch? I'd be like, yeah, fire me. He couldn't. He'd be like, dude, if I fire this guy, 50% of the revenue is gone. So like I, I had a lot of confidence in myself that if I just stayed the course, I would be working. I would probably be running sales organizations at top tier startups and then eventually running my own software startup. But there was something about every day I came home from work, I would turn on my vaporizer right away. I would use a vaporizer. And after the fourth exit, like I started feeling like, Hey, I don't know if tech is the thing for me long-term. And I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do with my career. And my wife had seen that I bought over 150 vaporizers. That was like my hobby. It was just buying vaporizers and taking them apart. And I started realizing like, hey, like all of these things are built with off the shelf parts. I'm a really good sales guy. If I could combine my knowledge of buying all these vaporizers, what's good, what's bad with my knowledge of cannabis, with my ability to articulate what I like and help people understand it, we could potentially start like the best vaporizer company um, this world has ever seen. And it was very tough early on. There was no industry. We would have to sell these things on the black market, or we would have to advertise them for like tobacco only and hope people could read between the lines. But because cannabis had made such an impact in my life from helping me sleep, from helping me deal with anxiety, from helping me get present, from helping me be more empathetic with other people's problems. I did feel like, man, I benefited so much from this. If I could help other people see how they could utilize this plant in a positive way, not only could I put food on the table, but I would also feel fulfilled as well. And in parallel, there was actually a guy in my hometown that was selling vaporizers and I was helping him sell them on the side on a commission only basis. So I would make cold calls after work and I was helping him move anywhere from 15 to 20 grand a month. So there was already some idea that if I put more time into this, there would be success. But the biggest hurdle was just going, man, what would my family think if I did this full time? Now it just goes from, okay, every once in a while, Sabo comes home and he smells funny to, oh, whoa, this is what actually Sabo is going to be doing for a living. And how Asian parents are, they talk with other Asian parents and they love to brag about their kids. And I knew that that would be an issue for them. But at the same time, it was just like, after my wife was saying, dude, you obviously love cannabis, go into cannabis. Once she said that, it just stuck in like my body. And like, I just had feelings of, I would call it anxiety right now. I just always think of it. It's like when you're doing something, if your head's telling you to do something, but your heart's telling you that's the wrong thing, like you feel this like discomfort. So I would always have this discomfort until I thought about the cannabis space. And then when I would think about cannabis, like all of that would melt away. Then I was like, all right, dude, this is what I got to do. Cause every time I think about doing something else, I get this weird feeling. And when I think about cannabis, it goes away. And that's when I started listening more to my body versus trying to override everything with, with my mind. There's so much there for any entrepreneurs that's listening to this. I want to underline a few things. It's not Sabo didn't just like, oh, I feel great about it. Let me just jump into this thing. As in trusting your gut, trusting your intuition. Y yes, you did that, but you also gather a lot of data points uh, along the way. One, you had 150 vaporizers. You took them apart. You actually look at, quote unquote, the market, right? You did extensive research and you look at the different engineering parts. You, you look at the pricing and it, it, intuitively, you didn't maybe perhaps consciously wanted to do that in a scientific way, but intuitively that's what you did. You also listened to your wife, 
right? Hey, your yeah. wife pointed out something. You also have enough self-awareness to just trust, hey, these are the benefits that I've gotten personally. What's possible if I pursue this to help others experience what I have experienced? You also have gone out and actually, without building your own product, pitch someone else's product and say, hey, I generated 15, 20 grand a month pitching someone else's product. I can probably have a higher margin if I pitch my own product. So these are all data points that you collected along the way. And the final threshold was around the family part. I want to dive into that a little bit more because I think culturally, I think that's a worthwhile topic. Then you decided to say, let me do this full time. So you didn't just jump from, hey, I enjoyed this to boom, let me invest my nest egg into <laughs> building a, 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 a high-end vaporizer. Yeah. 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 And I, I'm, I'm glad that you retold and resummarized because I realized it did seem like I just woke up one day with an epiphany, like I'm going to do this. And it was definitely over like a eight to 10 month period of, as you said, doing informal research, gathering enough data points, and then finally feeling like confident enough, especially with the support of my wife, that this is something that I should absolutely pursue. Yeah, that's such a blessing because oftentimes I would say even especially uh, entrepreneurs with a significant others or kids, this is a huge concern for them because you're taking additional risks. But in your case, you have a, not only very blessed to have a supportive wife, but also you are already well equipped with the sales skills, with the communication skills. So that is not something that you need to augment or amplify or bring somebody else in you already have that. So now you just need to do the research, to focus on the data, make the widget. And then you already have connections with different people, right? Because since you've been selling already. So effectively just customer results mechanism, you already have customers. You already know the results they want. You just need to build a new mechanism, correct? Yeah. And the way you describe it sounds like I almost deliberately did all these steps, but yeah, they just happened by accident. And to be honest, it's once I got inspired by it, I just started doing the reading, started doing the selling, started just informally collecting information until there was like that moment in my head where it's okay, that's enough information. I'm confident enough. Let's go for this. Let's try to figure out how to raise money. Oh, so you actually raised money right away. We started off with seed capital from, I'm not going to mention them, but uh, one of the companies that I worked for, the senior management team was like all about high end vaporizers for like white collar executives. They were like my first funders for this company. And I actually, it was, I didn't even have to raise a, a formal round. I just told them what I wanted to do. And they all plunked down like 50K each. And we had a 350K to play with right away.